this going to do, in your opinion, for the health care of, of Kern County to have this piece of equipment? I think it's uh, an important piece of equipment to be able to diagnose more accurately as to what the level of disease is, to have fewer false positives, or more importantly, fewer false negatives where we would miss disease and treat people appropriately, and people wouldn't have to travel outside of Kern County to get this level of testing. And not to mention the future advances that come with it, and all this comes with less amount of radiation as compared to the traditional spect. So you're getting essentially more information with a lot less radiation. Now, previously, it was pretty common that the people would have to leave to go to have this kind of testing done. Where would they normally would have gone? Well, it would certainly be out of Kern County, and people would go to C uh, Los Angeles, to UCLA, or Cedar sinai It's to bring a higher level of testing closer to home. And this uh, particular equipment, um, ha do, what do you have to do to be trained on it, or what kind of training does central cardiology have to do to, to be trained on this equipment? Well, there's a lot that goes into setting up a unit like this between getting the infrastructure for the staff first to get uh, have a separate piece of infrastructure in the building, meet all the regulations, then you have to have the generator on site to be able to produce the isotope for it, and then uh, go with all the safeguards that go with it, and as a physician, uh, certification in nuclear cardiology and PET to be able to read it and to safely administer the test for the patients who are here. You talked about future advances. Uh, the, the, once you have a piece of equipment like this, others start to, to build on that work. Uh, what do you foresee uh, the future of this, of this device? Uh, it adds a lot to what we do for cardiac patients in terms of picking up patients for viability, like patients who had blocked arteries and the muscle is not moving, traditionally considered to be dead myocardium or the dead muscle, so to speak. This is very sensitive in picking up whether the improving the blood flow to that territory by doing either stent or bypass surgery is going to bring that muscle back. So picking those up, and then we talk about future advances in it and picking up people who have dysfunction at the microvascular level, not picked up by traditional angiography, and picking up vulnerable patients even in heart failure where certain patients are at higher risk of sudden death with weak hearts. This will be able to, in future, there are still experimental protocols, but that is the future where you'll be able to actually predict, okay, this person is at more of a risk of having sudden death because of his weak heart by picking up certain hormonal and metabolic parameters and treat those more effectively. And just on a personal note, um, Dr. Bombi made the point that it's exciting to have good information for you as a physician. Uh, how exciting is it for you to work with this equipment and have it here uh, at your disposal? Oh, certainly this is an exciting time for anyone who is into cardiology and treating these people to be able to more accurately identify people who are at risk, to treat them more effectively, and most importantly, to get that information to be able to trust that this is more accurate and the highest level of accuracy that can be achieved with this.